hey, yo. me into Angelo, but I call her Yee. Angela Yee, I'm Angela Yee, Jasmine Brand is here I'm with me. I'm not just any brand, I'm my own brand. Man, shout out to Apion Crockett and Charlie Mack. They just walked in the room. Yes. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about my job. You never know who you might see. Yeah. Those are my real friends. Me and Apion go way back. I so. love Apion. He's hilarious. I know. So he's already making promises. He'll be back here next month. You so got to have, have him calls. I know. Listen, I'm working on it, Jasmine. Okay, okay sorry. They can hear us. Okay. <laughs> 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 We're working on it. All right. All right. Well, we do have a Wealth Wednesday today. And Shaquana Brooks, a.k.a. Miss Biz. Business and Lindsay C. Smith, the agent, is gonna they're gonna be joining us. They actually have free books that they'll be giving out for our way up listeners. Oh, dope. And they also have a free webinar that they're doing uh, for the next two Thursdays. So it was it was all through February, but you know it's Thursday, which is tomorrow, and okay. then next week, Thursday, since it's 29 days this month. Perfect. For February. So they have free webinars. Uh, Lindsay Smith is a licensed insurance agent. Shaquana Brooks is a certified public accountant. Mm -hmm. This is all information that I think you guys are going to love. And when you hear the things that they have to tell you, I know I was super inspired. Mm. And it made me feel like, why am I not doing these things to invest in my future? So, you know, we always bring that to you guys for Wealth Wednesday. But let's spread some love and positivity. We do that every day. All right. 800-292-5150. Call us up and shine a light. It's way up. Shine. I'm a shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Jasmine. It's so nice to see you here. Let's shine a light on somebody doing something positive. Now, you know, we care a lot when it comes to affordable housing. Well, yes. the mayor of Atlanta has established a 40-unit container home housing complex for the homeless. So shout out to Atlanta Mayor Andre Dickens. He actually participated in a tour of a new housing complex that was made from these containers. They'll provide 40 units of affordable housing to homeless individuals. The units are fully ADA compliant and will offer wraparound services like counseling support and peer specialists. They also plan to expand shipping container communities to other sites in Atlanta. Mm. And the goal is a larger goal of preserving or creating 20,000 units of affordable housing by 2030. Yeah, that sounded really loud in my ear just now, guys. <laughs> I don't know if it was just me. I thought it was my headphones. I was like, am I screaming over this? Shine a light. <laughs> um, but yes, and you know, Jasmine, Topeka, Jessica, and I, we're mm -hmm. a group of women that are working on doing affordable housing in Detroit. Yes. It's not an easy task. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, who do you guys want to spread some love to? Who do you want to shine a light on? 800-292-5150 is the number. Anthony, who do you want to shine a light on? I'd like to shine a light on my wife today. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I have to. Wait, you don't know her name? Oh, uh, yeah, I know her name. All right. Her now, name shine is... a light on your wife. Say her name. Deanna. Okay, Deanna. Why are you shining a light on Deanna today, Anthony? I'd like to shine a light on her because, man, we've been through... Um, uh, we just had a rough uh, pregnancy with twins and one passed, and we just been through some trials and tribulations lately. And uh, we've been together going on seven years now. We just had our anniversary, and through all the trials and tribulations, we just holding it together. Every obstacle that comes, I mean, I'm right there with her, and she's just taking it head on, and she's she's very strong with it. And I just want to shine the light on her to keep pushing that positivity and staying strong. All right. Well, congratulations to you guys. I know both of y'all have been through a lot, but for her having gone through that, you know, just make sure you uplift her all the time like you are right now. Shout out to you, Deanna. Yes, definitely. And I, I listen to you guys every morning, all day, every day. Um, I do the cash prize Monday through Friday, nine to five, everything. Like, okay. I can't believe that I got through on you. So it's like, it's like God shining Listen, listen, blessings, blessings, and blessings to you and to your wife and to your baby, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, we love you. All right, well, that was Shine a Light, 800-292-5150, in case you couldn't get through. And Jasmine and I are here. We're very emotional at all times. You never know what we might do. Mm. But we try to keep it off social media. And we'll tell you what Larsa Pippen says she regrets about her recent, quote, breakup. It's way up. Oh, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that yee tea. Come and get the tea. It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Hey, Jasmine Brian. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. 
just any brand. I'm my own brand. Let's get it to some Yeeti. Now, Larsa Pippen. She admitted that she was very emotional when she deleted all the pictures of Marcus Jordan off her page and also basically had said that they were broken up. And so she went on uh, the Teddy Mellencamp and Tamara Judge Two Teas in a Pod podcast and said this. Fake a breakup or something really bad happened. We never broke up, by the way, you guys. It was like a month of us not seeing eye to eye and me kind of talking to him about like, what does this relationship entail? And I wish I didn't delete those photos and I didn't even archive them, you guys. I just deleted them. So it was just an impulsive move. I was just emotional and like impulsive, I guess. Yeah. Oof. She deleted them. I hope she still has them in her phone somewhere. She said she didn't even archive them. So but I'm saying, you know, before you post them, oh, hopefully yeah, yeah, yeah. she has them. Yeah. I was saying, and Angela, I was saying to you, this is something I would do. Yeah. Did he delete them too? I don't know. Well, mm. one source is saying their spat was over Michael Jordan publicly denouncing their relationship. That's been happening. Yeah, that's old news. Because mm-hmm. hmm. then he definitely was posting with his dad right after that. Not that he doesn't always do that, but you know. Quoting Drake lyrics and stuff. And, you know, you have to understand that this relationship is going to be something that is scrutinized, yeah. that people are going to have jokes about, that people are going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you just got to be put, able to put down your phone to know that. Yeah. All right. Beyonce has become the first black woman to top the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart. So congratulations nice. to her. Yes. Uh, both of her singles made their first two entries on the chart. And one of them debuted at number one, Texas Hold'em. That's mm. my song. Too. I actually have gotten used to it now. You have know, it took you? a little I liked it when I first heard it, but it's not like my genre necessarily. It's not my genre either. But I guess that's the point. Yep. Right? And mm-hmm. I already know that video is gonna be amazing. Mm. All right, Time has revealed the 2024 Women of the Year list of extraordinary leaders working toward a more equal world. Uh So congratulations to the 12 honorees. Uh, They include Greta Gerwig from Barbie. Okay, okay. Uh, Taraji P. Henson. Yay! Uh, Jay Day, Coco Golf. Yay! You know, so congratulations to everybody who made that list, by the way. Beautiful. That's, That's a huge thing. That's a big deal. Yeah. And um, DC Youngfly, this is disgusting to me, mm-hmm. all right? DC Youngfly, uh, somebody robbed him. They stole a bag that went missing. It was at a show at the right. Hollywood Improv, mm-hmm. and somebody stole his bag. And there is a document in that bag that is priceless that he wants to get back. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves, all right? Here's what he had to say. I really was trying to refrain from this video, bro. I just want my book bag back. The bag got my girl death certificate in it. It got personal belongings in it. I just need the bag, bro. Mm. And I'm sure, like, keep whatever if it was money in it. But he said it wasn't nothing in it, just um, that, which is a huge deal for him. Yeah. It wouldn't mean something to anybody else. Right. But for him, can he have that memory, please, and have that yeah. important piece of, of paperwork? I mean, yeah, really unfortunate. I'm sure his kids would want to have that for later on. It's something that probably has him so much in his feelings i can't even imagine what that must be like but something that means something to you but nothing to somebody else right yeah you know hopefully just, someone does the right thing all right well that is your yt and when we come back we have about last night that's where we discuss what we did last night when i tell you i worked all day and mm. night yesterday i sent you a picture and you were like <laughs> that's a wig but we'll talk about it it's way up last night so about last night last night last night here's how it went down it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. My girl Jasmine Brand is here with me. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. Yes, and it is about last night. That's where we discussed what we did last night. Jasmine, what about you? What um, did you do? I didn't really do anything except I packed to, so that I could catch a train at 5 in the morning. And I had a call. Me and my girlfriends also are doing like a little small real estate deal. So we had mm-hmm. a conference call about that. Okay. Well, we had a ton of conference calls yesterday yes. one about our deal in Detroit. I also had a Zoom with uh, the New York City Metro uh, MTA. Okay. That's for the trains and the buses. Mm. They're having a huge problem with people not paying their fare. So people just jump in the gate or whatever? Yes. Okay. And also even just getting on the bus and walking right past the bus. There's people in this room who don't pay their fare. Oh, my goodness. By the way. So, but, what, but what you don't know is, is that they actually have pictures <gasps> and video. They have cameras so they see everybody who doesn't pay their fare. So Is that a fireable offense for someone that works here to do that, Angela? I don't know about that, but it is embarrassing. Imagine, you know, you ever go to the supermarket and there's like people who stole yes, their, their picture. <laughs> Imagine they put up an Instagram page Yeesh. and now you got to come to work. 
Mm-hmm. And everybody got to, or imagine if you're the boss, because, you know, people who aren't paying their fare is not necessarily just like kids mm-hmm. or because they get bus passes, train passes yeah. and things like that. A lot of it's people who have the money to do it. And so they have like their latte and <laughs> their expensive and they, clo- and they just jump over. Yeah. <laughs> What was the call about? Was the point of the call was to find solutions or? Yeah, like what are some things that can happen? Because it does really affect like the whole budgetary. Gotcha, the bottom line. Making sure that people can get paid. You know, it does mess everything up. So that was one thing I did. And then I had a photo shoot with this magazine called Alpha Magazine. I'm so bad at photo shoots. I don't know what to do with myself. (laughs) But um, shout out to the whole team at Alpha Magazine. I can't wait to see what it looks like. I sent you a picture. You sent me a video. Oh, a video. I had a wig on and a lot of people didn't realize it was a wig. Because Angela sends you stuff and she gives you no context she just and i thought it was an i was like oh angela got hair straight wait a minute is this yeah. her hair mm-hmm. i post a picture so you guys can see but okay. i put i had a wig on it's just funny because you know i do enjoy wigs but it's just i can't put them on myself still unless it's a headband wig shout oh out, yeah 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 shout out to private label in detroit we have the best headband wigs i was using those all during the pandemic mm-hmm. all right well when we come back you know what it is it is time for tell us a secret that's where you guys call up and you tell us a secret okay. and we don't judge you mano's not here today so they will be no judgment Mm -hmm. there are some it's it's two different people okay there's people who call in Mm -hmm. and they're so disappointed because they want Mano to judge them and then there's (laughs) People who call in and they are so disappointed when Mano is here. <laughs> right. <laughs> because they don't want Mano to judge them. Right. Which one are you, right. guys? <laughs> All right. But either way, the whole point to tell us a secret is for you to get things out in the atmosphere. Right. Maybe it's a burden on you. Maybe it's something you've never told anybody you want to share it. Maybe it's just a cute little secret that you're like, you know what? Y'all would love this. When I was eight, you know, I stole money out of my mom's purse. Who didn't do that? Uh, you never stole money from your parents? I don't think so. Everybody. Okay. You, Jasmine. I know. I uh, you surprised you I didn't steal from my mama as a kid? I know my mom's listening. Yes. They used to keep money in a vase in mm-hmm. the living room. And that was like their hiding place. Me and my brother would be like, come on, let's go get some. I don't think I ever, I don't think and I the, ever did the that. The trick is you just steal like a little bit. A little bit. bit. Yeah. A little bit the whole top. thing. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, call us up. That was my secret. 800-292-5150 is a number. Tell us a secret. We just want to hear your secrets. We're not going to judge you. You're anonymous. 800-292-5150. Tell us a secret. This is a judgment-free zone. Tell us a secret. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here with me. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. And it's time for Tell Us a Secret. That's where you guys get to call in. 800-292-5150. You can tell us things you've never told anybody. We're not going to judge you. Again, you get to stay anonymous. We just want to hear your secret. Put it out in the atmosphere. Yes. Let us hear it. And we're going to just mind our business after that. Okay. And maybe post it on social media <laughs> on, my, uh, on my Way Up with Yee Instagram page for people to weigh in and judge you since we're not going to do that right now, right here. <laughs> 800-292-5150 is a number. Anonymous caller, what's your secret? I work for this particular company that wind up closing down because they were doing some bad mm. But anyway, they dropped the bag. The guy, he was a mean, nasty guy, that uh, supervisor. He dropped the bag one day, and uh, I got the bag and found about $10,000 in it and never said nothing. Ooh, that's Nobody nice. Nobody never knew. Wow, so what'd you do yeah, what'd with you it? Yeah, what you do with the money? Yeah, I paid my mortgage up for about six months. Okay. Oh, I went on vacation. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I got some bills caught up that needed to be. But <laughs> That's responsible. He, yeah, that but, is. But the, but the lame guy that dropped it, he wound up going to jail for money laundering. Ooh, well, mm. we see what he was doing. Yeah. Or maybe it was because of that $10,000. Mm. Um, let me ask you this. Were you, were you ever nervous that you were going to get caught? Negative, because the area that he dropped it in, I already knew that area. It was down in the in in the back part of the parking lot, and nah, nah, nobody okay. saw me. And it's been it's been six years ago, so okay, so you're, you're in the clear, go. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's done deal. I'm glad right. that he He's happy. He like yeah. if somebody else dropped some money. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Hey, anonymous caller, how are you? I'm doing fine. How about yourself? I'm great. Thank you. It's me and Jasmine. We want to hear your secret. My secret is when I was 12 years old, I was taking weed for my mama, and now my 12 year old daughter taking weed for me. Ooh. <laughs> Have you checked her, or are you just letting her do it because it's a cycle? No, I checked her. <laughs> I don't want her doing that. Well, <laughs> well, you know, it's legal now, so. 12 was kind of young, though. Oh, wait, I thought, yeah, I'm sorry, I thought you said old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm sorry, you said 12 years old? Yeah, his daughter. Yes. So what are you, where are you going to hide this weed now so she can't get to it? That's wild. I'm sorry, I didn't realize she was 12. <laughs> Sheesh, Angela. It's like this new generation, uh, this social media thing, got everything, kids want to do everything now. 
Did you have a talk with her about it? Because she probably knows you smoke, so then they see your, their parents doing something. Yeah. What do you say to a 12 yeah. year old? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had a talk with her about it. She said she see me doing it, and eventually when she get older, she gonna do it. Ooh, did that make you feel bad? It made me feel some type of way, but you know, mm-hmm. it's nothing I could do when she get older. You sound like you high right now, perhaps. <laughs> you smoked already. You smoked already today. Yep. <laughs> all right. For my chronic pain. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for calling. Yeah, take care. <laughs> all right. Well, that was tell us a secret. Eight hundred two nine two fifty one fifty. In case you couldn't get through, we are still taking your calls. And when we come back, we have your UT. Let's talk about my guy Donnell Rawlings. Y'all gonna leave Donnell alone? But you know what? This is all great promotion because this new Netflix special is actually coming out yep. on February twenty seventh. So shout out to you, Donnell. We'll talk about it. It's way up. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Talk to me. Angela's spilling that yee tea. Talk to him. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee and Jasmine Brand is here. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. And can I say, these comedians have been <laughs> going back and forth. I've never seen something like it. this before. I love it. You know, I feel like Shannon Sharp set it off with Club Shay Shay. Cat Williams. Yeah, yeah. Cat Williams. Yeah. You know, and so now Corey Holcomb was at the Laugh Factory and Donnell Rawlings was there. Donnell had just done his set. Mm-hmm. Uh, Corey Holcomb had some jokes, though, after that. And uh, when Corey went on the mic, he used part of his time to talk about both Dave Chappelle and... And Donnell Rawlings. And you know, Donnell <laughs> and Dave are extremely close with yeah, each other. Yeah, they are. Um, Donnell has even come to blows <laughs> <laughs> over this. Donnell's a good friend, though, period, to everybody who yeah. he's cool with. And so here's what happened. You mild sauce, my nigga, mild. M I L D. I catch up in the hardest rooms in Brooklyn. And, and, and you ain't never. And you ain't never with them rooms. You're just yelling. Because I do have a mic. You want to talk about it? You saying I'm mild. You saying I ain't come through the streets or the gutters and straight bull. Matter of fact, when I met Donnell, it was before the Chappelle show started oh. and he was definitely doing all the room. I met him in Brooklyn Okay, at a few different um, little, you know, yeah. spots he in said, Brooklyn. He said, don't test him. He's yeah. not, he, Donnell's not mild. At all. <laughs> I've actually, I, I commend him. There was one time I remember I saw him doing the show and when Donnell was on the come up, I mean, there'd be times when, I think every comedian goes through this. It's not like a super packed audience. I remember yeah. one time it was an outdoor venue. Mm-hmm. He just took the mic. He was walking out into the street. We couldn't even see him. <laughs> but when I tell you he's so funny and really yeah, he- Works on his craft at all times and is so passionate. So, I, I, you know, I definitely don't like that. And he's a good friend of mine, too. And he does have a Netflix special, by the way, mm-hmm. coming out on the 27th. If anything, and I know how Donnell thinks, this is great promo for that. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, Donnell Rawlings doesn't like the fact that Corey Holcomb is saying that any comedian who has appeared in three or more movies has had to perform fellatio on someone <laughs> in the entertainment <laughs> industry. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, here is what Donnell had to say after this on TMZ. I wasn't there to watch Corey. I had performed myself and I was about to leave and they announced that Corey's about the performance. And I know that he had said some ill things about Dave Chappelle. I know he said some ill things about some of the openers of Dave Chappelle. So I just sat there, wanted just to see what his take on what he felt about comedy or whatever. I did not want to scream out at him, but I felt like protecting the integrity of myself and my friends. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so he went on to say also that Corey Holcomb's been in some movies too. So by his own admission, yeah, what does that mean? Corey is also known for talking, you know, smack about a lot of people and being super opinionated. That's Corey's thing. Yeah, but this didn't feel yeah like it <laughs> yeah. was it felt like an attack. Yeah. And Donnell, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, the 27th. The Netflix It's a new day, so Mm -hmm. get ready for that. Um, And speaking of more comedy situations, Mike Epps. This is something that actually ended up getting squashed before it could have gotten out of hand. It Mm -hmm. was him and Shannon Sharp. They had some some back and forth as well. Mike Epps talked about Shannon Sharp on stage. Shannon Mm -hmm. Sharp responded on his podcast. But the two of them did meet up over All-Star Weekend. And here is what Mike Epps had to say as he addressed this on stage. It was all love, you know what I'm saying? Cause that's, that's what happens when you, you know, when you, when you a real black man and you mature. I apologize to him because I called him Medea and all kind of <laughs> man. I went to hug that <laughs> guy. I felt him. I said, Oh hell no! <laughs> I had that pistol in my pocket just in case. 
<laughs> Not the hammer in the pocket. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> All right. Well, that is your UT. And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. These are the stories that may not be in the headlines, or maybe you haven't heard them yet, or maybe you have. But we are here to talk about it, man. And we want to talk about Hadia Broadbent. She is somebody who has been a longtime AIDS activist, a crusader. We've seen her from when she was really young, talking about her experience in living with AIDS. And she was born in 1984 with HIV. We'll talk about um, the unfortunate... Uh, scenario now she has passed away and we'll mm. give you the details on that and remind you about Hydea always all right it's way up under the radar is next in the news that relates to you these stories are flying under the radar it's way up with Angela Yee I'm Angela Yee and Jasmine Brand is here yes I'm here and it's time for under the radar stories flying under the radar but you need to know about them and we want to give a huge rest in peace to Hydea Broadbent she has passed away at the age of 39 mm. now she was one of the first African-American youth to openly discuss HIV AIDS. She's been recognized as a top influencer by Ebony, The Griot, The Root, Essence, 2020, Good Morning America. She was born HIV positive and doctors said she would not live past the age of five, mm. but she lived to be 39 years old. Here she is on Oprah back in 1996. Born, I was HIV positive. And when I turned five, I had uh, symptoms of AIDS. Mm -hmm. No one really knows how long anybody's gonna live. If you stay in your bed and feel sorry for yourself and don't get up with the birds and just sit there saying, well, I'm going to die, why get up and try and make a difference? Wow. Ooh, let me tell you something. That was so, I remember that. Yeah, so. I remember seeing her when, mm -hmm. um, when she was that young. And she said she didn't understand the magnitude of what she was doing when she was really young, but I knew I wanted to make sure I was accepted. And also for many of my friends, talking to youth, men and women everywhere, everywhere is what I believe in. You have to be an example to the audience you are trying to connect with. Mm. So a big rest in peace to right. her. All right. Now, Biden has canceled nearly $138 billion in student loan debt so far so we found out today even more debt has been canceled so yes. Uh, yeah, that's a huge deal because that was one of the promises from his campaign, student debt relief. It mm -hmm. was uh, really difficult when the Supreme Court rejected his signature, uh, I can't even talk, his signature student loan forgiveness program last year. But now they have been working around that being blocked right. uh, by finding other ways to help borrowers. So nearly $138 billion of federal student loan debt has been canceled for almost 3.9 million borrowers ever since Joe Biden took office. So that is huge. All right. And uh, that is you're under the radar. Now, we do have, since it is a Wealth Wednesday, we just talked about some money. Mm -hmm. We do have Shaquana Brooks, a.k.a. Miss Business, joining us, and Lindsay C. Smith, the agent, joining us. Uh, the two of them are giving free courses, free webinars, every Thursday for the month of February. Y'all missed the first two, mm -hmm. but there is... Actually, was, yeah, first two, but there's one tomorrow and then there's one next week. Okay. Next Thursday. These are completely free. They're also going to be giving free books that they've written to our audience, a licensed insurance agent and a certified public accountant. And they have some amazing information, things that I know that I need to handle for myself. So this okay. has really put the battery in my back. But you guys will really enjoy that on a Wealth Wednesday. And of course, we got the Way Up Mix at the top of the hour. It's Way Up. Way Up. <laughs> Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here with I'm me. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. And it's time to get into some Yee Tea. All right. So, according to People, they have an exclusive. Wendy Williams is in a facility to treat cognitive issues, and her family says she is doing really great. Mm. All right. So, you know she does have that documentary, Where is Wendy Williams, that was filmed between 2022 and 2023. Right. And that is coming out on the 24th. What's today's date? That's in three days. Oh, yeah. So, it's this weekend, probably. Yes. Yeah, so okay. uh, according to her family, her sister and niece said that she's in a better place physically and mentally. We, uh, let, us, let us pray. All right. Now, Hoda Kopi has invited Kelly Rowland back to today. Mm -hmm. That is after the reports that she did not like the dressing room that they gave her. She inquired about another one. And she was told it was Jennifer Lopez's just dressing room. And then she ended up not guest hosting okay. on the show. And here is what Hoda had to say. I have great love and admiration for Kelly Rowland. Mm -hmm. I adore her. And I want her to come back on our show. And I She's want her to host again. Any of course time. she is. Of course she is. She's she can best. share my dressing room. We'll be in it together. <laughs> 
So I guess it was a dressing room because Kelly Rowland has not said if that was the entirety of the situation. She ain't said nothing. And she's never really had a diva type of... <laughs> that we know of, right? That we yeah. know of. Yeah. So that's why I think it was weird for yeah. a lot of people to Surprising. hear this. All right, now Gunna, his bittersweet tour is coming. And Flo Millie is the opening act. I like that. I like her. Mm -hmm. I like that he has her on there opening up. So that's going to be really dope. Uh, and that kicks off on May 4th in Columbus, Ohio. And right now, this is going through June 11th. It ends in Atlanta, Georgia. It's only right. Yeah, of course. All right. So congratulations to him. And by the way, um, he said the pre-sale link is in his bio and it's on sale Friday. Listen, he's doing well. People thought he wouldn't do well after he got out. Listen, that's why you got to keep pushing. <laughs> yep. All right. Now, Diddy, a.k.a. Sean Combs, has filed his first official challenge to the claims that he gang raped a 17 year old girl at his Manhattan recording studio. This was allegedly back in 2003. There's new court paperwork that was submitted yesterday where he refutes those accusations that he and Harpier and a third unidentified man trafficked this teen across state lines, plied her with copious amounts of drugs and alcohol and took turns raping her in a bathroom bathroom mm. of his recording studio okay. according to his answer that was filed he never participated in witnessed or was or is presently aware of any misconduct sexual or otherwise relating to the plaintiff in any circumstance whatsoever Har Pierre who is named a co-defendant co in the case has also filed his own answer on Tuesday saying he never participated in the sexual assault of the plaintiff nor did he witness anyone else sexually assaulting the plaintiff this is still a Jane Doe okay. behind these allegations and she is the fourth woman to step forward in recent months and file a lawsuit against Sean Combs of sexual assault. All right, now one person who has spoken out on the Pivot podcast is Floyd Mayweather, and he said some things that people didn't like, and by people, I, I didn't mean, like it yeah. either. Yeah. Here's what he said. I'm not going to speak bad about P. Diddy, because um, he's still a black man. He, 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 mistakes happen, and I can't say if it is or it's not a mistake, but things happen in life. And P. Diddy business is P. Diddy business. It's not my job or anyone else's job to go on the Internet and, and stump him and kick a man while he's down. I don't think it's right at all. And I don't condone it. Even if that happened to my daughter, I would be hurt. But that's a choice that my daughter made. Ooh. I, he didn't need to add that in at all. The daughter part was out of control. At all. Even if he has a and daughter. I also don't think that referring to something like sexual assault as a mistake, you know, I, don't, I think that's poorly chosen. Yeah words that's that's a choice yeah you know whatever your daughter if your daughter gets assaulted that's not a choice on her part right but that's a choice for somebody who assaults somebody that's a choice not the person who is being assaulted you know I hope, uh, maybe he misspoke allegedly being assaulted but yeah uh, you know i don't know <laughs> well anyway that is your yt and when we come back we have ask ye 800-292-5150 is the number any questions you have we are here to help in the meantime let's hear some of uh one of our favorite artists scissor with snooze it's way up whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should, so you should know. This is SP. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine from the Jasmine Brand is here, and we are doing Ask Yee. 800 292 5150 is the number. Hey, Al, how you doing? I'm great. How about yourself, Miss Yee? I'm good, thank you. What is your question? Well, I'm dating a girl right now, and she, she's not really communicative, not really involved, like personality wise. And her love language is purely physical. That's mm. the way it seems to me. But I'm bored as hell. I'm a sapiosexual. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, I, I don't know what to do. How long have you guys been dating? Almost two years. Oh. Wow, that's a long time for you to have been bored. <laughs> Did things change or was it yeah. always like that? I mean, sexually, I was, you know, it was exciting. You know, the whole first year or whatever, I guess. But I'm looking for something deeper. And it's just like mentally, I'm just not being fulfilled. Okay, so it feels like she's just not the right person for you. Ooh. Damn. I mean, right. that's, I what you're, that's, what, that's what you're telling me. What does she say when you talk to her about this? Because it, it feels like the conversation is not up to par. She just gets upset and just like, you know, her response is like, well, you know, I don't talk a lot. Mm. Is there a reason for that? Like, has she ever expressed anything in her life that maybe makes her uh, more closed I off? I have no idea. I used to think like maybe she was like, abused or sexually abused or something happened wrong in her life and I was trying to pry a little bit mm -hmm. but it's just empty is she like that with everybody around her her friends her family I don't believe so okay nah, so she, she seems a little bit more outgoing with other people 
Because I'm thinking maybe if you're around her circle right. more frequently and she's comfortable speaking around them, it might make her more comfortable, you know, looking at you as not just her lover, but also her friend. I, I think I met one of her friends. I think you need to know more about her circle. And then I would also say because you guys have a very, it seems, physical, sexual relationship, maybe mm-hmm. there's more things that you need to do that doesn't include that, right? Maybe mm-hmm. it's more of you getting to know her as a person and doing things that don't include intimacy. I try to, but, you know, it just, it just the event turns into like real, you know, it's just boring. <laughs> so, it's, it's tough. It, it is tough, Angela. Like this, yeah. is, this is a difficult personality for me. Sounds like you're not compatible. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just feeling like everything is great physically, but as far as you being able to connect on a conversational, intellectual <laughs> level, it's not there. Okay. All right. I just wanted to hear from a woman, and I think y'all right because I came to that conclusion a while ago. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look, it happens, you know, and it doesn't make you yeah, a bad person. Sucks. Right. Or her a bad person. Right, right. Yeah, just, just. I guess we're just a little bit off the mark, I guess. All right, well, thank you, Al. I wish you the best. Good luck. You got to find somebody that's on thank that level. Thank you, ladies. You. Yeah. That was Ask Ye. Thank you guys so much for calling us up. And you can always leave a message, 800-292-5150. And we'll either get back to you or play your message and ask your question. When we come back, more questions. But this is all about finances. We have Shaquana Brooks. She's a CPA. And Lindsay C. Smith. She's a licensed insurance agent. And they have some free information, some free game to give you. Don't act like you're not going to get your finances together because we have free information. No reason you can't start today. It's way up. Had a dream of living wealthy. And I don't mind sharing my wealth, dog. Getting you straight financially, mentally, and physically. This is Wealth Wednesday on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And y'all know I love talking about financial wellness and things that we can do to help you out. And now we have something really special uh, for you guys today. What we're going to talk about, we have Lindsay C. Smith and Shaquana Brooks here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about life insurance and also accounting your taxes different strategies you can use and you ladies actually are working in conjunction with each other yes Yes. so what is it that you're offering so Lindsay and I decided to put the pieces together for everyone there's always so much communication about taxes and wealth and building a legacy and trust and all of these different things right so you have when you're thinking about wealth you're thinking about I see this person, she or he does taxes. Mm-hmm. This Lindsay does insurance. This person is talking to me about trust. Right. This person's a financial advisor. Wait, stop. How does how do it all it together? Right. come together? And so Lindsay and I thought that it would be good for us to have the conversation together versus having the conversation separately because the reality is when people are getting introduced to all of this information, they're still like, okay, this information is great, but how do I execute it? Who are the players that's going to actually put it together for me? And so that's what Lindsay and I are doing, just trying to help people get to their future financial self, mm-hmm. but being able to connect the dots for them. And definitely also to make it simple for them. Right now, we're talking to licensed insurance agent Lindsay C. Smith and certified public accountant Shaquana Brooks. Well, let's do a version of that today because I know you have free webinars every Thursday this month. And I did this maybe like... I don't know, six or seven years ago, I got life insurance for the first time. And that was something that I never had, but it was also confusing for me because there are so many different types of life insurance that you can get. So maybe you can break that down for us. Absolutely. The first thing about life insurance is I think a lot of people, especially in our community, we stay away from it because we don't understand it. It goes over our head. And like you said, the types, knowing what type do I need? And even to know that it's not just death insurance, it's life insurance. You can actually utilize it while you're alive. And three of the biggest strategies that I like to use are one to create that tax free retirement income out of it Mm -hmm. using that permanent coverage that universal life that whole life that builds cash value that allows you to create an income over time just think for all the entrepreneurs and all people who are have a W-2 job that might not have a pension they may need a supplemental retirement and why not have one that can be tax free so life insurance does that for you but people don't realize that and you can tap into that money also okay so you're able to actually take an income out of the life insurance tax-free so that you can have a retirement income. 
And then another opportunity, you invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. People can use it to invest in real estate. If you purchase a universal life or a whole life permanent policy, you can actually use the money. And this is something Shaquana did. I did. Instead of using the money from the bank, instead of using hard money, Mm -hmm. you actually can borrow money from your policy, use it. Let's say you were doing a flip. Mm -hmm. And so now you'll take this money, you'll pay for the down payment, you'll be able to do your flip. If you need renovations, you can take the money from your policy. And now you don't have to pay like a regular hard money. You got to pay it back every month. You can pay it back when the deal is over. What happens if you don't pay it back? So if you don't pay it back, when you pass away, the money comes off the death benefit. Okay. So you that's so you the, have until you die to pay it back? Absolutely. Wow. So I didn't know. What, this is the thing. <laughs> if you <laughs> were to it. pay it back. You can keep reusing it Mm -hmm. and you can use it and it grows while you have the money out. Okay. So the money is growing while you have the money out. It's like your own personal bank. Exactly. And the last thing is funding your business. A lot of small businesses, the banks are not giving you money for that. You decide you want to start selling here. The bank is not about to give you a hundred thousand dollar loan. But imagine you had the policy. I had a client who wanted to start a trucking business. He was like, hey, Lindsay, where can I get this money from? The bank won't give me the money. I'm like, you have the money in your policy. He borrowed the money. He brought a truck. After the truck was making money, he paid it back. He brought another truck. Mm -hmm. So these are some things that I think if we're able to teach people how to use life insurance, how to understand it, what types to get, then they're going to be able to push forward in their financial goals. We have more with Shaquana Brooks, who is a certified public accountant, and Lindsay Smith, who is a licensed insurance agent. When we come back, you're going to get some more valuable information. It's a Wealth Wednesday. It's way up. Dream of living wealthy. And I don't mind sharing my wealth, dog. Getting you straight financially, mentally, and physically. This is Wealth Wednesday on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. On this beautiful Wealth Wednesday, we have Shaquana Brooks. She's a CPA. And we have Lindsay Smith, who is an insurance agent. Agent, both of them, by the way, certified, licensed with some valuable information. There's a huge difference between how corporations are approaching taxes and how small business and individuals are approaching taxes. And it's not because of money. Most people are like, oh, it's because of their corporation. They have so much money. No, it's a, their mindset right. around taxes. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. looking at taxes mm-hmm. all year round. How can we lower this tax liability? What business can we start? What investments can we So you, the best thing to do in order to lower your tax liability is to start a business or for an individual, like say you're not a business owner mm-hmm. and you get a, a salary and you're like, all right, how can I make sure I maximize mm-hmm. my return? Turn, what what types of things can people do? Absolutely. So I am not going to sit here and ever say there's a ton of options for W-2 employees mm-hmm. because there's not. The reality is the government incentivizes business owners and investors. So if you are a W-2 employee, what I always suggest is that hobby that you're doing for free that everyone's calling your phone for you need to start charging for it. Right. Because under the IRS code, your business just needs, you need to bring in some sort of income. In, or it just needs to be $1 in order to start writing off these expenses. Your rent, you can now write a portion of your rent off. That vehicle that you're driving, you can now write that off. Right. You can pay your children, right? So everyone's you always- You work from home. <laughs> you can you work know, from home. Exactly. hobby. So part of your mortgage or rent, Yep, you can, can buy be part of that off. off. Right now, we're talking to licensed insurance agent Lindsay C. Smith and certified public accountant Shaquana Brooks. Yeah. Let's talk about these free webinars. So what type of information will people get and how can they even sign up? Can you see it after it's done, right? And then um, how can people sign up? And then what are we talking about? We're doing them every Thursday. In terms of replays, replays are not available. So if you are seeing this, make sure that you go and you register. Um, you will be able to um, just join for free. In terms of the things that we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about tax strategies. So Lindsay will be talking about. Right. Come on, Lindsay. So I'm. I'm gonna, yeah. So about. I'll be talking about insurance, but I'm mm-hmm. going to give the strategies of how you can use it while you're alive. Also, I'll be talking about the types of policies, how you know what type works for you and yeah. your family, because that's a bit that's confusing but this is the thing it's not too late right because a lot of people say oh I'm 50 I don't know if, it, if I can still get it you absolutely can I've written policies for people who are 80 I think one of the biggest issues with insurance and this is the thing that I also speak about in the webinar is that people are not connected to insurance because they haven't been left insurance before mm-hmm. and another topic that we're going to talk about is just funding like using other people's money before I started my own company I worked at one of the top accounting firms in a real estate fund and they literally raised $265 million 
You know what they did? They went and leveraged that $265 million that they raised, and they went out, and they got a line of credit for another $265 million. And they tapped into the line of credit before they ever tapped into the capital that they raised. And we have to structure our lives like that as well. If we have, like, for instance, that $30,000, I could have taken that out of my bank account, but guess what? That would have been my money once right. it's gone, poof. Yeah. But with me utilizing other people's money, the insurance policy, I was able to keep my money. So now I can do something else with that. Right. And now my investment is now working. So pretty much throughout all of these free webinars, our goal is to just bring it all together for everyone. So that way it's not like so many disconnected topics mm -hmm. and i believe we're giving out a free yes 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 so we're giving out our books for free just text 41372 text the word ye and you will receive my book which is 300 plus tax deductions because the number one question i'm always asked is what can i write off so yep. you get 300 things Plus, that you can write off and Lindsay. And you get my book, Creating Wealth Through Life Insurance. And it's simplified so that you can understand life insurance so that you don't have to worry about feeling like it's over your head. Okay. Well, I love yeah. it. Well, Lindsay C. Smith, Shaquana Briggs, thank you all so much. What are your social media handles so people can follow both of you as well? Okay, so mine is Lindsay Smith, the agent, mm -hmm. and my name is spelled L I N D S A Y because okay. you make it spell with a E. <laughs> <laughs> my name on social media is Miss Business 101, so that's M S dot Business 101. All right. Well, thank you all so much. I really do appreciate it. Thank you I think this was really us. insightful. Yes, and I thank really you. We appreciate it. I'm saying y'all better go and sign up for this absolutely free webinar, but also make sure you get your free book. All right. Yes. <laughs> What's the number one more time? 41372. Text YEE to 41372. You can watch that full interview on my YouTube channel, Way Up With YEE. And when we come back, of course, you guys have the last word. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here. Yes, I'm here. I know that's right. I know that's right. Um, and by the way, thanks for showing up today. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for having Every me. Every time you're here mm -hmm. on a Wealth Wednesday. And also thank you to my guests who were here today. Shaquana Brooks and Lindsay Smith. You can watch that full interview on my YouTube channel, Way Up with Yee. Yeah, I'm losing. I have so much going on right now. I just want to make it through. These yeah, next I know. You, yeah, it's a lot. <sighs> <laughs> a couple of days. But I do want to say I will be in Miami. We will be in Miami yes. this weekend for the Sobe Wine and Food Festival. We're going to be eating. Yes. And we'll be at <laughs> the Eden Rock event, the cookout that we're doing yes. with Chef JJ. So I'm super excited for that. So you guys can uh, go online and get your tickets for that. But it's going to be 10 black chefs from around the country. Yes. So I can't wait to eat. I'm going to be in food heaven. I know that I have a detox I'm starting okay. on Monday. Okay. And I purposely was like, after this weekend because I would hate to deprive myself I would hate for you to do it that too. way. I'd eat on your behalf though. Be clear. Relax. That ain't happening. All right. I'll be there. Okay. All right. In the meantime, you guys have the last word. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I have a secret. My secret is I have been seeing a married man for almost three years now and I think, nope, I know I'm in love with this guy. Yes, my name is Curtis Pride. I want to shine the light out on my wife, Marcina Pride. She has her 11th annual Natural Hair, Health, and Beauty Expo going down on March the 17th from 12 to 7 at the Coliseum in St. Petersburg, Florida. I just want to shine her out, shine the light on her, Marcina Pride. Going way up, turn up, turn up. with Angela Yee.